Hey guys, to show you that I'm not slacking on the uh, Mission Impossible project, I actually pulled out the log style EGR exhaust manifolds and gave them a good working over. Uh, the problem with the uh, old cast iron manifolds is they're hard as hell. Do not even waste your time with a good burr on them. Get an old beat up burr and spin turn it up and just nibble away at it little by little. You also have to be careful about how thin you make it, just like anything else. I mean, this doesn't have any cooling except the air. And you can see how they necked it down, right, on both sides to get the, so you can get a, a wrench around where the bolt is. That's a a serious restriction right in here. So this has been raised a little bit. The hole is actually a little bit bigger than the exhaust port for anti-reversion. This distance between these bulges has been increased quite a bit. The shape of the bulges have, have been changed quite a bit. You can only get so far in there, so you can only do what you can do. Will it help? Sure it'll help. In fact, I did a flow test on these not too long ago, and it really wasn't that bad. I think the exhaust port was flowing, uh, I want to say 170 at that point. And I can't remember exactly what we were getting out of the exhaust. Somebody can look that up. I'm not going to take any time and go through my old videos to look at that. But even though... <laughs> A lot of time was put into these. They don't look that much different than stock. Will they flow different than stock? I think so, but not a huge amount. Let's take a look at some other places on these. Okay, the center is a common non-divided uh, intersection. You can see these were brought down quite a bit. They're much thinner than they used to be. Okay, and the curves have been changed, but it's still basically the same shape. This bulge here has a turn around this side, where it's shaped. It should be pointier, but it's rounded. It's okay. You can see how far I could get with the burr, and that's about it. Okay, so you get what you can get, and uh, don't worry about anything else, because... You're not going to cut these open and do work to them unless you're really twisted. And then you have to weld the cast iron. That would not be a good time. Uh, the original shape of this wasn't really that much different, but there's all kinds of casting marks and jagged pieces. Uh, you know, it is just done with a burr. I'm not going to polish it or anything not like that. I'm not wasting any time doing that. As it is, it took quite a bit of time to just get the shape a little better and reduce our bulges, right? Because the exhaust is coming straight out here. It doesn't want to hit this bulge. So work on that. Okay, the other side, you can still see uh, outline of that casting mark all the way down the bottom. You know what else has been changed? This is much deeper than it was stock. If you make this deeper, you can give it more of a radius turning around. That's going to help. Do not make this too thin. You need, you need some metal here to seal the gasket. Okay, as far as the outlet, it's only a little bit bigger than it was stock. You can only do so much with it because, like I said, the iron is so incredibly hard. It's going to take a long time to make it larger. You're better off working on the shapes that you can get to. And making it more like a, a, a nice radius that the exhaust gases can get in and out. I shouldn't say in and out, just out. We really want one one way direction of the uh, of the exhaust flow. Will these help? Sure, they'll help. Are they better than the older log style? I don't know. I've never seen uh, the older. 318 log style. Now these are the the ones that were bolted to uh, like the 302 style head because they have the EGR ports. Okay, 
Now we're going to have to block them for this project. We're probably going to have to put some plugs or something in those. I'll have to see the way they, uh, the way they fit on the 318 heads. That's something, if we're going to do that, we'll do that at DV's shop. I'm not going to do that here. What else did I have to show you? Uh, I actually did a final on the the open chamber heads. I don't know if I'm going to do a video on them. I would have to reflow them. And I did do, uh, actually, I probably should. I did quite a bit of work to them just before, uh, you know, I packed them in the car and take a drive up to North Carolina to see DV. And uh, I should show you what I did. That's that's a good idea. Okay, what I did is I took the DV open chamber chunk and I drilled some holes. Why would I drill some holes? Well, certain areas, the, the Sonic just cannot get in, in and out, okay? Even though the probe is considered a quarter of an inch probe, There is no way to get this probe to read these angles. It's not happening, okay? You can get here. You can do all this side. You can do the bowl. No problem. But those curves around the guide, can't see it. You can't see it with the Sonic. Yeah, I cut this open so I could get some measurements from this side. Notice how flat that bowl is, right? So if you want to give it a better, more aerodynamic shape, you're going to be pushing your luck. So what I did is I drilled some holes. That way I can actually see the thickness. And I did go back and push my luck a little bit on the ones that we're going to be running on DV's uh, Mission Impossible. Same, same idea here. I mean, take a look at this. I don't know if you can see, but the left side of that um, that hole could be brought out a lot deeper. Now look how thin the one on the right is. Okay, can't you can't measure with the Sonic, and there's no way I'm going to you know ruin the heads that I've already put 100 plus hours into. But I did re-engineer the bowls according to the roof heights. And uh, when I get to a chance to reflow those, I think it'll help. It'll definitely help in the, the higher lift ranges. Now, I don't know the whole game plan. I'll get, I'll get the game plan from DV when, when I finally get to North Carolina. But I know they wanted to run those open chamber heads that I did with the manifold. The, these these iron manifolds, the iron intake intake manifold. I have an iron throttle body intake manifold. I have an iron single plane intake manifold, all of which have been ported out. Those are all done. They're ready to go. We've got the carb spacers that Brian made up for us. I will probably bring my modified BBD just to bring it to show what I, I did for testing. I think that's about it. I do have I do have some 318 valves that came out of these heads that Tim donated. I will uh, grind those for the right angle and bring them with me. I do have a set of brand new 318 valves I'm going to donate to the project. They're uh, completely stocked, but they're they're good. Remember, the sizes that I wound up using on uh, the open chamber heads were stock valve sizes. Right? 1.78, 1.5s. All right, just going to give you a reminder of what the, the 318 intake port looks like. Let me see if I can get some better light on that. Okay, the one thing I can guarantee is these bowls are wider and deeper than the last time you guys have seen them. Did I push my luck as far as the thicknesses on the sides? No, they're plenty safe. Did I push my luck with the roof thickness? Well, if it's fairly close to the DV chunk, they should be good to go. Now, like I said, there's no way for me to measure these, but 
they should all be safe and uh, ready to make some serious power. Now, the game plan was to make a horsepower per cubic inch with the stock size valves, the horrendous dual plane intake manifold, which is really probably the worst. The worst part of it all is that intake manifold. Very small runners, even though I did a ton of time porting it out. You can see I coated these with WD-40 so they look like hell because they got all dirt and dust on them since they've been done. But uh, in reality, just by going with the flows I did last time I worked on these, before I made the bowls even bigger on the intakes and the exhausts, uh, a quote from DV was, we got flows that good out of E7 TE heads, and they held, they, they made 500 horsepower. So in reality, these are open chamber 318 heads that will support 500 horsepower with the stock valve size. So, yeah, they're pretty hot. For what they are, they're pretty damn hot. Will it make our one horse per cube with the tiny manifold, the tiny carburetor, and the exhaust manifolds, I think it should easily do that. Now, what I really hope DV does is he sets these up with some decent springs, and we can run it with the bad manifolds and exhaust manifolds, and then move through the intake manifolds up to real manifolds, like a nice Edelbrock Victor or something, right? With a set of headers and a nice four barrel, <clears throat> and these will come alive. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.